Hey y'all, this is Amanda with She's a Mad Gardener and today I'm going to be doing a May garden tour. So I'm going to be working on the front yard, the side yard, and the backyard. There are a few areas I'm going to skip because I've got a couple projects going and I want to make sure I keep those a surprise for you guys. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the notification bell and leave me a comment. Every time you guys comment or subscribe, that helps grow my channel and allows me to bring you all more videos. Okay, I wanted to start in front of the house. As you might have already seen, I recently did a spring update on my porch and I think the porch is looking fabulous. One of the major changes I did is I ended up moving up my lemon cypress trees up toward this front corner. I don't think they were getting quite enough light um, back in the porch, so I moved them forward so they could have a little bit more. Over here to the right too, I've got my Alberta, my dwarf Alberta spruces that I planted up earlier this spring. They're doing fabulous. I'm thinking about changing up over here um, because I really feel like it looks like Christmas over here. I feel like I've got a little mini Christmas tree and then on top of that I put red and white blooms and then some gray kind of wintry blooms at the back. So every time I walk by this I feel like this side does not complement this side of the um, front area. So you will see a project up here later. I'm gonna be removing some of these, not getting rid of them, but removing them, transplanting them to other areas, and then getting this area to kind of read better with this side of the garden. All right, so over here, some of my favorite bulbs are about um, to come up into bloom. These all are Blazing Star Liatris um, that are coming up. There's about 50 uh, bulbs in this area, and they will have tall shoots that are purple. And I'll throw a picture up here on for you guys so that y'all can see what they're gonna look like. They will um, be really tall in this area. Eventually, this Alberta spruce will grow to about six feet, so it will hold its own with those bulbs, but for now, they're gonna engulf it for a couple of weeks. I did also take all my wine barrel um, designs. They originally had daffodils in them. I've trimmed all the daffodils back and filled them with some just basic annuals um, just to kind of fill in the space. But I do love the whole look of this side of the garden. Um, Jeff, make sure you give him a good view of all of this um, dianthus. All this dianthus across the front came in on clearance from Walmart one year, and it has just given and given and given. Um, it also is evergreen, so it stays green all year round and then gives me multiple uh, flushes of blooms. Now back here in this area of the garden, this is one of the very first things I planted in this garden when we moved into this house was a spirea because I love, love, love spirea. I have two different times, kinds. I have a double bridal wreath spirea, which is on the back, and I have this one, which is a red spirea, and it is just stunning. Its blooms are red, however, when the light hits them right, they look almost fuchsia. So yeah, definitely zoom in here, sweetie, so that they can see what this looks like. It's a pretty nondescript plant when it's not blooming, um, but it has some nice texture. This year, I think it's really kind of doubled in size. It's just beautiful. It will give me two bloom cycles. So it'll give me a bloom cycle now, and then it will give me a bloom cycle in August as well. So this is an area that I did a recent video update on over here where I planted several seedlings. So I've got these big leafy things you see in here. These are Pacific Giants Delphinium in here. And I grew them from seed. I typically buy them from the nursery and they cost me like 20 bucks a plant. So this year I was like, okay, I'm gonna bite the bullet. I'm gonna grow them from seed. They have done fabulous, especially since I put them in here. They are very happy. You can see them over here. This is also, um, this is a cherry blossom fountain uh, uh, delphidium as well. And it's done really well. And then over here, I had one Dusty Miller make it through the cold freeze, but now it, that had one over here and it had died back. So this area is looking a little sad. I'll probably fill it in a little bit more, but I did think I had lost all my maiden hair fern and it ended up all coming back. So I'm super thrilled with the maiden hair fern and how lacy it is. It makes for really great arrangements. Okay, so back over here are my limelight hydrangeas. I originally had my boxwoods here and then I moved them and put in these limelight hydrangeas and they have done beautiful. And you can probably tell by how big they are over here. They are happy, happy, happy. 
and I can already look in here and start to see, oh, actually that's a different one. I can already look in here and think each of these is going to be a bloom. Like it is going to be awesome. I expect for it to top out at about this height right here. So it should be really pretty. I plan on cutting on it a lot. Um, I wanna use these blooms for cut arrangements. I put two in here and I do have extra drip lines run to back here so that they get a lot of water, especially during the heat of this time of year. Now this area down here is gonna be transforming this next weekend. My daughter and I love to do projects together, especially on Mother's Day weekend. So we're going to be setting up her fairy garden. So I can't wait to show you guys the tour regarding that. Okay, so this whole area is definitely a feature of our front yard. Um, it's at the corner of our property. We have an area, uh, we live in an area where lots of people walk, walk their dogs, their kids, play. And so I always like to keep this area really bright and colorful. Um, I will be taking out this crepe myrtle this year. I know a lot of you guys are like, oh my gosh, why would you do that? Well, it's because I hate crepe myrtles. Like just really being super basic about it, I don't like them. Um, this particular variety is a dark red variety. It's one of the very last to bloom and it's one of the very first to lose its leaves. So it just really doesn't have the impact I'm looking for. So that'll be a fun project later this fall, show you guys um, what I'm gonna be doing there, which is super exciting. But for the color, the annual color, I do have um, a couple of drifts of um, super tunias. This is a silverberry super tunia, and this is a fuchsia super tunia. And I had three plants here, and when I planted them, I showed you guys, and I told you it was going to fill in the whole space, and it has, like it has covered all the ground there. And then I have a lot of Dusty Miller. Now, I like Dusty Miller in the, um, in the landscape. A lot of people actually don't like it because it is such a jarring contrast in the landscape. But I love the light gray color, the white color. I think it's fabulous in there. And I help, think it helps lighten up the space. And then a huge drip of dianthus going all the way across here. And then ending with these blue penny violas right here who I planted them in the winter. They're just still doing so good. I don't have the heart to <laughs> rip them up. Uh, look at these beautiful, sweet blooms over here. Yeah, they've just done beautifully. I just, I can't get rid of them, y'all. I'm just gonna let them go until the Texas heat just takes them out because they're just so beautiful. Now this area right here is an area that I really haven't dealt with or addressed at this point a time. I usually like to fill it with um, several varieties of coleus, which I probably will still do. And I'll kind of draw it up into the landscape back there. You can see all my Coreopsis back there is starting to bloom and it is looking stunning. I have the yellow one right there. And then I have a burgundy Coreopsis in the back. Several mums tucked into the landscape. I'm a big proponent of mums because they give me so much wow factor for the money. I usually get three bloom cycles and I do have a video all about mums if you haven't checked it out either. Here is my heated up yellow Gallardia by Proven Winners doing beautifully. Um, these plants were probably a third of the size um, earlier this season when I planted them. I can't imagine what they're gonna look like at the, <laughs> at the end of the growing season. They are so stunning. Now, this is an area of my garden that's not going as great, in my opinion. Um, my poppies never really took off this year, so I'm about to pull all those out. And I do have the Sun Credibles um, sunflowers, and they get, gosh, maybe eight to 10 hours of sun right now. And they'll get more as the days get longer, um, but they're not doing so great. So we'll see how that kind of transitions. I might have to dig those up and move them somewhere, but I do really enjoy the Veronica, the Magic Potion, um, or Magic Show Pink Potion Veronica, which is looking good there. Now this area, check out all these oxide daisies. Okay, I transplanted this, you guys, in, oh gosh, I guess it was before, the winter hit so in november i moved all of these i moved five plants so i've got four of them over here and another one off to the side but you can look at my size and i'm a tall person i'm 5'10 look how gorgeous these daisies are and i've been waiting to cut on them until i did this tour for you guys but i'm about to go crazy cutting on these and then they will give me a whole nother flush of bloom so they are beautiful and once they start to die back will be about the time when these scabiosas really get going right here 
Um, I'm going to try to decide what I want to do with like kind of this negative space, especially this negative space on the wall. I would love to do some kind of beautiful metal trellis, um, something for it to climb up on, but that's another project for another day and I'm just not at that point because if you don't know, this whole side garden, like all the way here and all the way down the side, this is all new. This was all my therapy during COVID. So my husband and our sweet friend Richard helped dig all of this up. And so this is really the first full year. We've hit just hit the um, one year anniversary mark. So this garden looks pretty dang good considering it's only a year old. The centerpiece of this garden is this Ruby Falls the Ruby Falls um, Weeping Redbud. And if you need a fabulous ornamental tree, it's not gonna get much bigger than this. Like this is its full grown size. Um, in the spring, it blooms beautiful pinky purple flowers all over it. And then the flowers turn into these gorgeous burgundy heart-shaped leaves. And then as the summer goes on, all of these leaves turn into a bright green and then when the fall comes they all turn bright yellow like for real flowers burgundy green and yellow it is amazing what this tree can do plus once everything falls off all the branches are this weeping look so they all kind of just weep down and it has a beautiful kind of structure during the winter in the garden now Underneath this, I'm still messing around with this. I've got a whole bunch of basil and I put um, in some annuals over here. And then I have a mess of snapdragons that I grew from seed over here mixed in with some petunias. These over here, um, these two bushes are icicles, uh, licorice icicles, and they are getting ready to bloom as well. I originally had six of them all the way across the front. So it was like this really light gray color contrasting with this tree up here is gorgeous, but I lost um, four <laughs> out of the six and I've just left these other two here. I'm pretty sure I'm going to transplant them and move them somewhere else, um, but I really do love the contrast. And these particular plants, they host um, painted lady um, butterflies. And so usually about, gosh, beginning of summer, we'll get a whole bunch of chrysalises in here and a whole bunch of butterflies living off these couple of plants here. Okay, transitioning more down the side yard, I have one more of the oxide daisies over here. I have a whole bunch of straw flower um, seedlings coming up and they will fill out this space. These are balloon flowers starting to come up as well. And I'll be excited to show you guys all of this as they continue to bloom. But look at this guara, y'all. Can you believe this? And when it catches in the wind, it is just stunning. Absolutely stunning. It is a beautiful plant great for movement. I rarely use it for cut flowers just because the bees love it so much. I just try to stay out of the way and let them enjoy it. Let's shift this way a little bit. This area is definitely a trans in a transition. Last year I planted these three sunshine ligustrums. They got some kind of fungus or something going on with them. So we've been keeping an eye on them. And then we thought we lost them in the frost and then they've come back but they've come back not very pretty. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. I can't decide if I'm gonna keep the two end ones and get rid of the middle one. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. So this area is almost like um, an experiment over here. I have a ton of seedlings. I've got scabiosas, I've got straw flowers, I've got agaratum, I've got African daisies. Um, these all right here are all of my daylilies that are coming up and they're the large scale variety of daylilies coming up. I mean, there's a lot going on right here and I definitely don't feel like I have found like the perfect solution for this space. Um, I feel like it needs to be wow and impactful, but I just can't get there. I felt like, you know, the space over that we just looked at with the, um, the weeping Ruby Falls Redbud, I feel like it just so naturally came together, but this one has been a struggle. So you're probably gonna see several videos of me trying to figure out this space as well. So one thing you'll see a lot in my garden is I love to repeat um, th some things. 
I have a small garden, but I don't want to just do one of every plant. Like you need to have some repeat in some areas so you can have some consistency. So you'll see some areas where I've tucked in the Dusty Miller or I've tucked in the Dianthus or a couple of different things, just so it relates again to the things in the front and makes sense. So it's not all just this jumble of plants all the time. So keep that in mind as you're continuing to plan your um, garden. This whole area right here are lots of Shasta daisies that are just about to start up and bloom. And then back over here, we did have, um, we have tropical um, milkweed over here. And earlier yesterday, we did find a butterfly, or I mean a um, monarch butterfly caterpillar, but I don't see him over here right now. So, but I'll put up a picture of him. He was over here uh, just chowing down and enjoying life. And then back over here is definitely still a transition area as well. Now this rosemary, I just kind of plucked this guy here. I moved him from the back garden to make room for more cut flowers. I actually thought we'd lose it in the, in the cold weather that we had. No, it, it thrived during that weather. And, but I placed it by an area where I've got this sweet little pixie bush that is just getting swallowed up. So this guy's probably gonna get um, moved. I do have Russian sage coming in the back and as that grows, it will fill up this whole area right here. And then right here is a Rose of Sharon. This variety is peppermint smoothie. Peppermint smoothie. So this will have tons of red and white pink blooms. This will grow in height and eventually fill out this whole wall here. So we will continue to uh, train it and I will cut the lower branches and keep forcing all the growth up. And eventually, I hope that the trunk, it's a multi-trunk, I hope that it will bridge, branch out of here and then we'll have no foliage below it. We'll only have foliage up and then flowers at the top too. So this eventually will be a beautiful, beautiful focal point. Over here, I have several yarrow. Um, coming up, these are all of the cottage yarrows, so they're going to be in bright pinks and fuchsias. And then I do have my smoke bush that I snagged at the end of the season last year, and it is doing beautiful. Um, so I'm super excited to see this guy grow and fill in this space. It's very wild kind of look. I mean, I might train it a little bit down low so that I can still plant underneath it, but I cannot wait to cut this, you guys, for... Uh, cut flower arrangements like in the fall. How gorgeous is this gonna be? I'm so excited and then the rest of this space is still in transition it's still areas that I'm trying to figure out and I actually have a negative space. Can you believe that? Yeah So that's super exciting I would love to do something like put an oak leaf hydrangea over here and let it get large and wild and crazy um, But I'm not sure. <laughs> I think I'm gonna plant. I did pick up an oak leaf hydrangea I think I'm gonna plant it in a pot and put it here with a drip line for now and see how it does and then if it does well for you know a full season or so then i'll consider planting it directly in the ground okay you guys so we did the front and the side yard and now we're in the backyard and the backyard is definitely about experimenting out here i try a lot of different things with different seedlings it's where i kind of have a lot more messy uh, not so attractive things because this is the space where i experiment so in the back here, you can see my setup and I do have a video coming out real soon of all these shelves. So I'm not gonna show you too much about it. Have a couple of pots that I just planted up today coming out for another video. But over here, these are my tomato seedlings. They're doing real well. Um, they're the Sweet 100 tomatoes. Um, you can see how tall they are compared to me. They're doing fabulous. I have two of them in pots with drip on them. They've already set fruit and they're doing fabulous, which is awesome. So over here, um, this whole area is a cut flower garden as well. I, in, you, once again, you probably already figured out that I like a lot of stuff in my gardens. So there's tons going on. So this whole flower garden is filled and then we'll continue to trade places throughout the season as one thing dries off like the larkspur, I'll come right back in and I'll fill it in with zinnias. So I will constantly keep this garden producing throughout the whole year. Now, in the back is my uh, vertical wall planter, and I recently had a video come out about this. This is fabulous. If you have not tried this, it is amazing. The key to it in my area, and remember I'm in Wiley, Texas, zone 8A, is having a drip system set up with it because this sucker will fry in July if it is not getting watered on a daily basis. And I do have a full-time job other than this, and I have three children. I cannot water my plants every day, you guys. I just can't. 
So almost everything that I have in my yard is set up on drip. So I have a whole bunch of gladiolas about to come up right here. I've got some poppies in the back coming through. I do love this. Jeff, if you'll show them this. This is agaratum and it's the timeless mix of agaratum and I have it in pink, lavender, and deep purple. And it is um, all grown from seeds. I grew the seeds inside. It's doing really well. They're looking really pretty. Look at those colors. They're looking a little limp right now because it's the end of the day. But yeah, that's gonna be beautiful. Those are all cut flowers. Okay, and then transitioning over here to this larkspur. I mean, this larkspur is just going for it this year, you guys. I have not even cut on it. Um, I can already see its seed pods coming in. I just, I've been busy, y'all. I've been so busy. But I cannot wait to get in here and cut back on this and start sending out, putting out some um, cut flower arrangements for you guys. And I have one random, look at this guy. One random sunflower came up. I guess it's from last season. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what variety it is. It's going to be a surprise. Um, so that'll be super fun. Back here is all of my new bachelor's buttons. It's a mix. I have blues, light pinks, dark pinks, whites. They're all about to go in bloom. I do have Dara that's coming up that's about to go in bloom. Lots of seedlings tucked in here, lots of scabiosas, um, asters, straw flower, all tucked in here too. Now, here's the big question of the hour, y'all. All right, Jeff, come on here and show them these right here. These are bulbs that I planted last year. They came up green, then we had that massive winter frost and now they're not very happy. They haven't put up any blooms and they look like they're done growing. I cannot remember what these are, you guys. If you recognize these, if you could help a girl out and uh, drop a comment, let me know what you think those are. I, it could be lilies, it could be, I mean, it could be lilies, it could be allium. I don't know, I don't know what it is, I cannot remember. I did not videotape myself planting these, so I can't go back and look at it, um, so is what it is. So, um, but take, take a look at this phlox. This is called, I believe it's Early Princess um, Phlox. Uh, and it is just stunning. These are probably almost three feet tall, each individual stalk is. And as I cut these and remove these from the plant, it will send up new stalks. Uh, these are absolutely stunning for cut flower arrangements. They come back year after year, they're perennials, and I just, I just love them. And I love this lemon ball sedum underneath. Um, the kind of limey and yellowish green below the phlox, I think is just beautiful. This whole area will be filled, probably by July, will be filled with zinnias and sunflowers. So it's going to be super fun to show you guys all that. Okay, for those of you who watched our trellis project earlier this year, I've got these big cattle troughs um, that I got for my 40th birthday, and I've got three of them to start with, with these big um, cattle panel uh, trellises over them. I'll be adding two more later this season, and in them right now, I've got garden bush hybrid cucumbers, and they are definitely setting fruit like crazy. Jeff, you want to get a close-up of this? They are setting fruit like crazy. These are excellent for pickling. Um, and I love how the little curly cues right here grab onto the trellis. If you've ever grown a cucumber, it's just so pretty and so delicate. Love it. So those have tons of fruit on them. I also um, have a couple of potted tomatoes up here and basil. That's not what eventually is gonna go in here. Eventually, um, I'm gonna have all those dahlia tubers that I planted, they're all gonna be in here. So they'll be big and large and filling in this area, which will be fabulous. Got a little bit of trailing lantana that will grow over this during the season. And so these two are filled pretty well with that. But let me take you guys over to the greenhouse over here. Okay, you guys, here's my little Amazon uh, greenhouse and I'll put that link down below in the description for you guys, just so you can see. But you know, I just posted my Dahlia um, video the other day where I got all my pl uh, tubers planted and look at these guys. They are so happy. As a reminder with dahlias, you just wanna water them lightly once until they really get going. They don't like too much water because they will um, 
rot, but almost everyone, I have a couple, I think I have three that I don't have anything coming up in. So we'll see, we'll give them a few weeks. Sometimes it can take up to five weeks for dahlia tubers to um, start sprouting, but they're looking great. I have a wide variety of other seedlings. Just let you pan. Wide variety of other seedlings, including status, um, cilantro, uh, Italian parsley, some more straw flower coming up. I have tons of Cosmo seedlings that you guys can probably spot in a heartbeat because they're so distinct with their lacy green uh, leaves. And then I even have some more, um, what's called a lemon cucumber, which is actually a yellow cucumber I'm excited about as well. And then I have several pot, uh, flats of plants in front. These are all projects coming up uh, for a fairy garden design, a couple of lavender projects, which are beautiful as well. But let me shift you guys over so this is actually the very first cut flower garden that I started here at this home in particular. Um, there's a lot going on. And once again, I, I don't have barren gardens. I like all the stuff. So you definitely see all the larkspur, which is doing beautifully. My dark purple larkspur comes in first, then my lavenders bloom, then I start getting white and pink. So it's kind of a transition of color. I rarely get them all at the same time. And then I have a wide variety of Sweet William, Dianthus, and Phlox across the front. Um, this is called Diamond, Diamond something. I'll have to look it up, y'all. This uh, white Phlox is beautiful coming in here. I got the, uh, the pink Phlox, or the pink Sweet William. This is all Sweet William right here. And then the red Dianthus, which is on its way out. It was beautiful a week ago. Um, I need to come in and cut it all back and then it will give me a whole nother transition. I have a few calendula that are kind of, eh, they might need to be trimmed back a little bit. I definitely need to start collecting seeds from them, but they're looking really good. And then this whole area kind of just transitions over to the side with some cherry caramel phlox and a lot of lilies that'll be coming up. You probably have also seen all the spiky greens in the back. This will be tons of gladiolas across the back here, which will be absolutely beautiful. I do have this lemon balm. <laughs> Y'all, this lemon balm is going crazy. I cut on this all the time for cut flowers. So I can come in and hack this all the way back to the ground and it will still come back over and over and over again. So it's about at that point where I will come in and cut it all out. I'll use it for a big, gorgeous, beautiful arrangement. And then it will spend the next month growing back, which is beautiful too. And then over here, I am still waiting on my poppies, you guys. Like I, I was looking at some time hops or some photos from a year ago and my poppies were finishing blooming and they haven't even started now. I mean, look at this. I mean, it hasn't even set up. It's shoot, it's probably gonna be this high when the flower comes up. I have no idea what this particular variety is. I threw out poppies, pop, poppy seeds with abandon. I didn't even think about it. I just tossed them out everywhere just to kind of see what would happen. So it'll be fun to see which ones kind of show up and which ones don't. But I'm excited for you guys to see all of the gardens at this point because truthfully in a month, they're gonna look completely different from everything that you guys are seeing here. And that's what's great about how I garden. Everything is constantly transitioning, especially these cut flower gardens. They will look completely different in a month. They'll look completely different in August. They'll look completely different in November. They will just go through transitions as the spring blooms move out, summer blooms move in, and then all the fall comes in as well. But hope you guys enjoyed the tour today. Make sure you give my husband a thumbs up on those comments. This is his first time videotaping me or um, so you guys, his name is Jeff. So you guys make sure you give him lots of love um, because he is a software engineer. This is not his thing, but I think he's doing a really, really good job. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving you guys a thumbs up as well. As always, she's a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.